You recording? Recording in progress. Look at this beautiful shirt. Look at that oh, made on classic. Japanese. No, it's not Japanese silk. Fuck it's not. Man. I can. It's not Japanese silk cotton. I can see that from you. Yeah. 1957. What happened in 1957, then? That's the official year. So most people don't think they think it's the 60s that Kyokushin was invented, but that's when the Kyokushin Kaikan was. But what actual Kyokushin was 1957. He was still doing. Wasn't it 53? The first no. Oyama Dojo in 1953. 57 is the first time he called it Kyokushin. Ah, see? And then it has this a history quote for people? on the outside. See the quote? The, What's the quote say? The heart of our karate is real fighting. There can be no proof without real fighting. Oh, Oss. Hi. Which is what brought me to Kyokushin. Exactly. There can be no proof without real exactly. fighting. There's no respect without the proof. This is the essence of martial arts, or what it should be today. Right. Truth, which is why we are called the ultimate truth. Exactly. Doesn't mean you shouldn't lie or never tell, never tell a lie. Be true to yourself. Exactly. So if you live, if you live a little make-believe world that you stand there doing death punches into thin air all day, but never having touched someone, and you think you are this badass, legit killing machine. You are living a lie. That is not Kyokushin. Sadly, and some people don't re realize they're living a lie. If you look at our last episode, which we got a lot of comments on, and that's the thing, I feel bad for that woman. And I that know. thing, she thinks she's doing Kyokushin. She thinks she's, this is, I did a little bit of further research in this. And yeah. again, I like your idea. Let's not put names out there and whatever. So she, no. but her dad is like a fourth or fifth Dan <laughs> in, in, um, air quotes for, for the mm -hmm. podcasters kyokushin after watching that do you think she's doing kyokushin she thinks she does because she doesn't know any difference so i don't whatever to her yeah right? and the world is that, a big place this is what happens this is why i, I think that sh people should be held accountable mm -hmm. the same as they are in jiu-jitsu Mm -hmm. people would be you know certain things are, it's weird oh, this would not go over arts. in jiu-jitsu this would not go over in jiu-jitsu no, it wouldn't it, last 10 minutes it's a weird things in martial arts because if i now said uh, i don't know for whatever you know it's basically you know if i said well, I, i'm a member of mensa obviously i'm a member of mensa actually i am <laughs> i am as well i have an iq Triple figure IQ. Tri well, I hope triple it's triple figure. I hope it's triple figure. <laughs> <laughs> but you had to be one fifty, one fifty or above to be in Mensa. Triple figures. <laughs> so that's like me walking around now on my little Mensa badge I bought off the internet. Yeah, that's right. And uh, you know, going to Mensa meetings, and they'd be like, "Who the fuck are you?" And I'd be like, "I'm the Mensa man. Give me a sum, and I will uh, five. That's the answer." <laughs> <laughs> I, you'll be called out you'll be like you're not get the fuck out don't come back yeah and, and, and i wonder why it's why true. we don't have that in kyokushin or you know in martial arts certainly certainly kyokushin if you're willing the kyokushin kanji the kanku you've got oyama on the wall you call yourself kyokushin it's true not a derivative of kyokushit but <laughs> you call yourself kyokushin that is then true. Sh we should be holding people accountable Bring back Dojo Storming. I'm ready Bring for back it. Dojo Storming. I'm messing around with the volume here too. Let me know if, it, if I end up sounding too loud. I can hear you fine. I'm, no, but I'm trying to make you louder because you're on that crappy headset. So I wonder, Listen, like, this was £19.99. Does the same fucking thing yours does. Yeah. Yeah. The people can hear me. You always sound muffled, they say. Oh, they say? Who, who's they? Scott. All, everyone, oh, all wow. of them, okay, all the people. Comment down about my. Who sound sounds the clearest? Yeah, Scott sounds like he's talking through a sock, <laughs> and me is crystal clear, crystal clear, crystal clear. <laughs> These were made in Beijing City. In These Beijing headphones? City. Not you sure it wasn't in Peking City. <laughs> They're Beijing specials. Oh my god. A friend of ours from Japan was messaging me after that, cracking up. I forgot to send you that. He was dying. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I think we taught a lot of people there. We taught a lot of people about it. Actually, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. There was a lot, a lot of information that came out. Out of nowhere, Scott comes in with his Mandarin golden Chinese ball bombs. 
honestly, educate the people. I'll tell you where that came from. Um, so when, just after I moved to Toronto, I was pretty young, I guess late twenties. Um, I met somebody who was, uh, from Beijing and we dated for about a year. And so a lot of that stuff. So, and I ended up going to take Mandarin classes and stuff when I was with her. Trying to impress uh, her. Kind of, but her English was perfect. But she, uh, but she was the one who used to tell me, like, she used to make, she's like, you have no idea how much we make fun of you guys with Peking, Kung Fu, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, nobody over there. Like, we do it when we come over here to cater to you. But in yeah, China, otherwise like, you don't know what we're talking about. Exactly, because in China, there's no such thing as Kung Fu. There's no such thing as Beijing. There's no such thing as uh, whatever, the Tao. It's called Bung Fu. That's right. With a so, B. Anyway, that's and that's why. So I said, 1956, uh, China had the pinyin system. That now they spell things exactly as they sound. That's basically the pinyin yeah, system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spelled as it sounds. So Taoism is D A O D A O I S M, um, and whatever, and so on and so forth. But anyway, yeah, it was pretty cool. Okay, we can we can convert, oh, we can convert that one into people. I was just about waking up the audience. Just okay. waking up the audience. <laughs> Senpai versus senpai, senpai, yeah. senpai. We, and, we, and we've done that. We've done these before. We, you, know, you can do it to death. Different cultures, different languages. People, you know, not everyone crucifies languages. They crucify words, well, the pronunciation weird, of it. There's, there's weird little uh, rules and stuff that you wouldn't be aware of, right? And that's, and that's where it comes from. Like, Japanese has it too. Like, when I was in Kempo, we spelled it K-E-N-N, like Nancy. K E N P O, but you pronounce it K E M like Mary. Yeah, say, same as senpai. Exactly, it's yeah. pronounced sem like Mary senpai, but you spell it, and, it's, and the spelling is just because it's followed by a vowel and stuff. So it's it's whatever. But then people come over here and they don't realize it's because you, you have to adhere by these little. Things. Yeah. So then they end up pronouncing it uh, the way it's spelled. So anyway. No. Nah. Did so, you look at the post in the Ronin Life that I put up earlier? Oh, the one that you got in a lot of trouble for? Yeah. Well, not try. I'm just going to address this now in the show. I just want to address it in the show. Oh. I have amended it. I did adjust it because we all write. We write posts flippantly. We just write it down quick and then it's gone. What are you doing? Sharing the screen. Yeah. There's your post. Isn't this the post? This is the post you're talking about. No. Yeah. That was the post I'm talking about. I have slightly here. Let me do it. I have slightly edited my <laughs> comment. As it Listen, I can read my own fucking post. I don't need you to read it. it. Wasn't the old timers paved the way? Go on. What? Go on. Tell us about it. What's this post? Why are you editing it? Well, no, because the the original. We do write things quite flippantly, and we say whatever. A friend of mine uh, put a, a post up saying, "I don't trust words anymore." I only trust actions. People can pretend to do a lot without being serious about it. And that's from my friend, uh, Sensei Attila Kun. Mm -hmm. Kun, Kun. Um, so I, I put that up and immediately said with it, especially in martial arts, full of old men talking about what they used to do and how it was back then, but haven't done anything since they're one big thing. No one cares that you fought in a tournament or that you won gold 40 years ago and have done nothing since. How about what you were doing today, now, to develop and improve? Whoa. It was kind of, a, yeah, a bit scathing, Whoa. but it was kind of a throwaway comment as well. Now, people took it then that that was aimed at every old person that's doing karate or martial like, arts. Like me. Like you. <laughs> but... It's not. It wasn't aimed at old people. It was aimed at people. And we all know them. People have done one thing. They did one thing in their life 40, 50 years ago. And they live off it. And they've lived an entire life off that one thing. Mm -hmm. They've never done that. Oh, remember Smithy was the legend in school. Yeah, you're 60 years old now. Yeah, remember in the locker room when I did that thing. American football you're not big for that. American yeah, have you have you not done anything else in your life? What are you yeah. doing now to develop people and, and you know keep in? And a perfect example, um, a, a, a big inspiration to me with Tameshwari is Mick uh, sent by Mick Gooch. Enough to know. You would have heard him. He's IFK. He's the guy who does the one finger press ups. Okay. 
How can you not hear of him? I Mick know. Gooch, right? Yeah. So he did a lot of Tomashiwari breaking the coconuts. So and he kind of pioneered the one finger, one arm press up. Okay. Mm-hmm. And now he was doing that back in the day in the 70s and 80s. He was doing it at demos. He was on the TV doing it. He was all over the shop doing it. Um, now, Mick now today has got... Mick's got to be in his 60s. Uh, Mick, I mean, if you want, I'm not sure. I'm sure he's about 65, maybe Mick is. Um, Look at but that. he can he, he can still do it. He yeah, still I'm can do. A freaking picture right now. <laughs> put put a picture, put a picture never, up of Mick. Holy shit! I gotta look up this guy. I gotta get him on my podcast. He's a big he's a big IFK. He's just produced a book called Balancing the World on One Finger. There's Mick. That was back in two thousand and three. That was yeah. But now he can still he he, he had a I think he had a, a stroke. He had a stroke not so long ago, and he was told. Stop fucking doing one fingered press ups, Nick. Look at and this. relax a bit. Holy shit. He's in, the, he's in the Guinness Book of World Records. So there's a picture of him when he was younger doing it. Now, picture yeah. older on a nail. Look, wow. How did I never know about this guy? What the? Because you're living under a fucking rock in Alaska. <laughs> snow. So, it's snow gets to me. So Mick Gooch, he. Um, he was an inspiration of mine wow, in Tameshwari. Look, look at this guy. On a, he does it on a arm. nail. God, look at his finger, though. Oh, his finger is like 90 degrees. Oh, he does it. But Mix now is in his 60s, and he can still do it. He hasn't, He, you know, he didn't do this once back in the day and have now lived on that story for the rest of his life. He can still do it. Oh, yeah, in fact, recently... Wow. Recently, now Mick. Well, that picture there, the top right that you're looking at, that picture is on the cover of his book. This one here? No, no, no. It was the other one. That one there, in your top right. Here, here. That. Yeah. Okay. Well, you click on. I, I don't know. I, your your screen's different than mine. Yeah. Um. So Mick, in his sixties, can still do it. Um. He's been he's gone into the martial arts hall of fame and, and these award shows and stuff. Um, he is in the Guinness Book of Record for the most one fingered, one armed push ups on a nail. So he's in the Guinness Book of Records and he's just brought a book out in the last two years. He wrote the book. Wow. So this is not someone sat on his ass going, Oh, 40 years ago, I used to be able to do a one fingered press up. What's he doing then? Uh, he's doing it, uh, doing it on a bottle there. He used yeah. to do it on everything. Oh, my God. Just used to do it on everything. Good God. And, he, and he's old. There. He's in his 50s there. He's older than the, I'm in my 50s. I, he's older than that. He's a looks like a tough motherfucker. Yeah, Mick is. Mick is. I've shared some stuff of his. Um, and he, he's who inspired me, you know, for breaking... There's a there's a, a young video of him. He was on. He went on Britain's oh, Got Talent Britain's Got as well. Talent. Oh my god, that's crazy! So there he is. Britain's Got Talent. Yeah, he's an old he's an old soldier, Mick. He's an old soldier. Wow, sorry, I'm not lovely sure. guy. I, I didn't hit volume on this because I didn't realize I was going to be showing. Uh, yeah, this one fast. Well, look, see it. Oh, here he goes. Oh my god. Okay, he's 54 here. He's 54 years old. Understand. Look at this. Yeah. And you look how knobbly his fingers in it. Look at it, how stubbly it is. Mm. There he is, banging him out. Mm. Look at his finger. Mm. Honestly, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Mm. But he's, he's been doing that. For thirty odd years. Wow, and he's still doing it. And and he used so that now he does it. He's got a nail hit into a, a plank of wood, and the nail is a, a slightly bigger head on it. For that, he used to do it on like a, just a normal nail. But what he found was it was actually just ripping through the skin because because it's such a small point, and the amount of pressure going onto it, it just ripped through his skin. So wow. he, uses, he has a slightly larger head nail to do it on. But, I mean, the man is now in his 60s doing it. Do it and he can still do it. I He's had to slow down way. because of a... Yeah, he'd be a good guy to have on. Uh, I'll speak to him and Please put you do. together. Yeah. Um, 
so, so Mick, and Mick came on to it then as well, and he was saying, yeah, you know, people do this. And this comment, so my post wasn't aimed at anyone that's old, because the old timers paved the way oh, he for wasn't us to come through. Me? Well, at you, I'm talking about you. You were not. <laughs> they paved the way for us, okay? They paved mm-hmm. the way for me, for you to come through. Mm-hmm. Now, it was talking about people that have done one thing in their life. And you know, you know what it's like, that one guy, he talks about, he talks about that one fight that he had. And he's been talking about that for 30 years. And okay, fair, you know, fair enough, whatever. Mm-hmm. But th- there's so many people today that walk around loads of stripes, six, seven, eight stands, loads of stripes, and they haven't done a lot. Maybe mm-hmm. they were in the second or third world tournament. They fought once in that tournament, and they've lived off that for the rest of their life. They okay, haven't like, developed. Kind they, of like you did. Like I did. Did I, did I? Do you know that I was in Japan <laughs> twice? <laughs> And I fought in the world tournament. Dude, people are still waiting for more stories out of that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and someone, someone brought up a valid point. They said, "Well, isn't that what you do? Yeah. Isn't what oh, you really? you talk about stories?" Yeah, a friend of mine. It was. Oh, it wasn't okay, said okay. nastily. It was said as just to be devil's advocate. Right, right, right. And it was like, "Isn't that what you do? You sit there and talk about things that you used to do." Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, that's a valid point. But I talk about things I used to do to give me context today. I don't live on the fact that I, I fought in the world tournament. That's that. That's my one thing. I don't even really talk about the world tournament. We talked about it in a story but just to give people that background and what it was like. I'm not even interested in tournaments. I'm interested in what I've done now, today, what I'm developing, what mm-hmm. I'm putting my students through. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, 10 years on the door, I can call on that wealth of experience to talk about things today. Yeah, this is how it's going to feel when you punch someone in the face. When they're unconscious on the floor and they're bleeding, you're going to have adrenal aftermath. I can call on mics because I've done it. And I can say, this this is what you're going to experience. It's not going to be pleasant. So, you know, I can still talk. I, I'm doing that now. I'm not like, yeah, well, when I was on the door, I used to do I knocked the bloke out. That was that. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't need to. I'm, all, I'm going forward. Forwards direction I'm going. I will use the past to help me go forward, but I will not sit on my laurels. So you don't live on your uh, live by your uh, last previous achievements. No, because that they they last years, last decade, whatever, aren't they? They're gone. True. I got tro- I got I, like loads of trophies in a box in the attic. They're gone. But we different all do decade. It we all do it. We do, and and, got- and and don't don't get me wrong. Reminiscing is different. You reminisce about the old days and the past and what you've done and you can talk about it. That's a different thing. But when you go the one guy, sixth dancer, you know, whatever, whatever grade he is, he's just been there. He's never done anything. He's just been there. He's refed at the tournaments. He's never Mm -hmm. fought in the tournaments. He's just been... (laughs) He's a superb whistler. He's just been around. Those are the sort of people I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And then they walk around with their high grades on Acting oh, like they are. Kick, it's kicking off. You hear that? That means that means Ariel's home. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, look, you fucked it up. You fucked my train of call. Oh, listen, you've been really good the last two couple. Of, you haven't been interrupting me, and now you fucked up my train of thought. Right. Good night. That's a show. Ta ra. Wow. <laughs> That's all. I just wanted a comment. I just wanted to comment on that. So I edited it a little bit slightly to say, look, I'm not talking about old people in general. I'm talking about the old timers that have done fuck all. And still living off it. And still living off that one thing. Lots of old fuckers I, have done fuck all, but they're still legends in there or whatever. But people yeah, if you're I mean, there... a legend, you're talking about it. It's We're not talking about legends. We're just talking right. about the people that are just there in the background. And you're like, well, I've seen him everywhere, but. I've never actually seen him do anything. That's why it's or really cool. train. That's why it's cool. When I, sometimes I'll meet somebody who's um, older than me in that generation, and then somebody will introduce me, and then you know you meet this person. They're really cool, whatever. Blah blah blah. And he's really nice, whatever. And then you walk away, and you're over the side, and you go, "Man, did you know that guy you just talked to? He won fucking gold medals and blah blah blah." <laughs> and you're like, "What?" But he never mentions a thing. Exactly. Like, you would never know I'd been to Japan unless you Google it. (laughs) (laughs) 
Hey. Right. Go on. School. Uh, well, schools, not schools. Uh, outdoors opened up here in uh, Canada, in, uh, in Chennai. Uh, sorry, Canada. Chennai? What? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it's Chennai. <laughs> <laughs> you said so, Connecticut for you, like in Connecticut. No, I mean Chennai, Canada, China, Canada. What's the difference? <laughs> Chennai, <laughs> you're owned by China. China owns you, so no difference. Anyway, uh, so outdoors uh, open, and I'm actually supposed to be at a, going to a class tonight after this, but I get invited to. We got invited to uh, a restaurant. It's the first restaurant. Restaurants open outdoors. So tonight is our first chance to go eat outside. So we accepted this invitation because quite frankly, it's been a long time since I've been in a restaurant and a long time since I trained. Um, but we did train on Tuesday night and it was awesome. Cool. And I, uh, I can't wait to do it again. Here's a little clip from our little. Uh... Oh, you trained out outdoors, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Look at the old man there kicking. Let me tell you what I noticed about. Let me tell you what I noticed about you. What's that? That I'm old? Son. No. no I'm not turning Is my you hip over because I'm too old and not. No, you kick much better with your Son. right than you do with your left. Oh yeah. Okay. Much much better. Yeah, you look like you've got a big imbalance. Really yeah, I do have. Especially I haven't been training uh, specific karate in a while. But that young lady is really good. Anyway, it was awesome. I can't wait. So I hope the guys have a good class tonight. No. Good. Yeah, it's nice to be back in it. You realize we, we would never have realized, would so we, good. how much we what miss. Jesus. What? Good Lord. What have you done? Just drunk your own piss? No, something went crazy on Facebook. Uh, yeah. You don't realize it. It's crazy. You don't realize it. The, the, how you miss standing in line, training with people either side of you. It's amazing. It makes you feel so good. It's it's That's... incredible and it, it felt amazing and being outside too is something about it um it's yeah i really missed it i'm gonna miss it tonight but i do want to go see our friends at this restaurant it's good, it's good. after the shit we've had it's good to go out we we've planned a weekend we're out uh saturday with friends for dinner yeah. and we're out Sat father's day sunday here so Susie's yeah, arranged yeah. Uh, me and Bryn, we're going out clay pigeon shooting and quad oh, biking. Oh, nice! So yeah, and then we we'll go for we meet the girls then in town and go for dinner after. So we got a, you know we got some nice stuff planned that you got to get out and do it. Yeah. Uh, so tonight's show we were going to talk about uh, the dojo kun and mm-hmm. the eleven motors of Masoyama, just to go yeah. through these. So while I was uh, brushing back up on the dojo kun and, and l- looking into it a bit, because you know we we. So, should recite this at the end of every session uh, that we do. Now we say it, uh, but a lot of people say it as empty words, and we never really uh, understand it or look at it. What are you doing now? You're seeing screen sharing it, yeah? I'm just showing that this is the dojo kun. Yeah. I don't think they'll be able to read it. Oh, really? No, that's too. That's unfortunate. But we'll read it anyway. I'll read it out now. But. You, um, you do it in. Uh, I'll do it in English. I do it. You do it in Japanese. I do it in Japanese. Hitotsu wa wa wa. I got the first bit. Hitotsu wa wa wa. I always used That's to get it. a kick out of that part. What wa wa. It is. And whenever, so I, I may have mentioned this. I've been to Japan. So when I was when I was in Japan and we were in the temple and we obviously oh. reciting it in Japanese, yeah. it would be like you know. The highest grade would say it in Japanese, and then everyone else would be that first line would be Hitots, what do you want? And then everyone would mumble, next line, Hitots, what do you want? <laughs> but that first line, everyone gets that first line. Uh, what do you, what do you are? <laughs> so a, a story I heard a while ago. Now I do not know the validity of this story. Mm-hmm. I will need to check it actually. Uh, she and Cam. No, apparently this comes from Sorsai's wife in okay. an interview she gave. All right. So as we know, Sorsai was a big fan of Mozashi, the story by Eiji mm-hmm. Yoshikawa. 
huge fan. Big, big fan. Big, big fan. A lot of things were taken from or influenced by Musashi, including the 11 mottos of, uh, yeah. of Oyama, uh, the kun, but whatever, go on. So did you know that uh, Yoshikawa helped Sosai write the Doji Kun? I did. I did so that. yeah, pe- people may know this, but a story I heard about it is that uh, Oyama wanted to meet uh, Yoshikawa, yeah. uh, but he didn't know how to meet him, and he discovered where he lived. Um, oh, he so he used him. kind of stalked him, yeah, full on stalker. That a boy. He uh, he discovered where he lived, and he used to go to his house and wait outside it, you know. That's off literally the stalking. That's hopefully, awesome. <laughs> hopefully, trying to bump into him. Right. Um, and he, was, he would get his wife to make him uh, a packed lunch, and he'd go then. He was doing this wow. for a couple of months. That's pretty dedicated. Okay. It is. It, it, to, try, to try and spot him. You know, he was yeah. too polite to go and bang on the door and go, you I like you. Casual. Just be like eating. Yeah, food. like, oh. Oh. You live here? Ha. Huh? Oh. <laughs> well, you say you're a writer, really? What What have you written? What have you done? <laughs> <laughs> so well, he was there for a while, and he noticed that there was there was two maids that would come outside and they would chop the wood, mm-hmm. and he was a bit surprised That's that how sexist. how how it's like two mates. We're talking back in the, back in the day, mind how two maids were chopping the wood. So he went and he offered to chop the wood for them. So he went and chopped the wood. Attaboy. Um with And then one day, hand. with his bare hands, don't be facetious. Okay. There's a word for you people, facetious. Look it up. This is what Scott is being. Flippant. Flippant and fac- right. facetious. Right. Terry um, the show. Go on. <laughs> He's going to strop now. He's stropping. He was already in the mood before we started. So he uh, was chopping the wood and stacking it all nicely. And then one day, um, uh, E.G. came out and looked and seen all the stacked wood and asked the maids and said, "What? What? How, what's going on here? And they said, oh, that Mr. Oyama has been chopping the wood for us and, and stacking it. Uh, and he said, oh, well, I would, okay, next time he's here, I'd like to meet him. So Oyama wasn't there. He said, I'd like to meet him next time he's here. So next time he comes, they meet and they're chatting and Oyama explains to him that I've just uh, built the hombu, the Kyokushin Kaikan. Um, Really? Uh, yeah, they, well, again, I don't know the, the, the validity. This is a story that I have seen supposedly comes from Sosai's wife mm-hmm. in an interview that she gave. Cool. Uh, so they, he's talking to Yoshikawa saying that, uh, obviously, I've got the Kyokushin and the Hombu and how much the book inspired him. And would he help him write his Doja Kun? Uh, and he said, yeah, of course, I would love to. And so I said, well, I, I can't afford to pay you anything. And he said, well, you've been chopping all my wood that has been giving me hotter baths. So I think it's a fair trade. Oh, so awesome. so Yoshikawa true, awesome. helped write it. I, ho- I hope it's true. I hope it's true, it, too. It, that's a cool story. I will find out. I'll speak to Sean Cameron. I'll find out the validity of it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so that, that's the story about the Dojo Kun. And what is the Dojo Kun? I shall read the dojo. You see this here? I've got my pad with me. We're very professional now. I can pull up all sorts of stats. See, Pavel, we don't need you. Pavel, waste. I just got to remember my password to get in. <laughs> Might have to ring Susie. <laughs> <laughs> so, the dojo kun. We will train our hearts and bodies for a firm and shaken dojo. spirit. What do you want? Sorry. I you do the Japanese. <laughs> We will pursue the true meaning of the martial ways that in time our senses may be. I don't need to read this off you. I know it off by heart. Okay, let's do, wait. Hold on. Let's go one other time, though. So what's the first no, we, one? We, we, read it out to people. So okay, we will train, our, one, hearts we will train our hearts and bodies for a firm, unshakable spirit. What for does that a firm, mean? unshaken spirit. No, we'll go back over that okay. later. Let's just you read it. go through them? Okay. We will pursue the true meaning of the martial ways that in time our senses may be alert. Mm-hmm. With true vigor, we will seek to cultivate a spirit of self-denial. We will respect our superiors and refrain from violence. We will follow our honor. Well, this is an old. We will follow our religious principles and never forget the true virtue of humility. I was looking at this. This says follow our gods and honor unconscious. That's been changed by someone. Yeah, there's an altered version. We will, we will follow God. Yeah. We will follow our God and never. Yeah. Never that was an old version of it. Yeah. 
Uh, we will look upwards to wisdom and strength, not seeking other desires. Mm-hmm. All our lives through the discipline of karate, we will seek to fulfill the true meaning of the Kyokushin way. Mm-hmm. So we say this quite often, but we never really actually mm-hmm. look into it and what is it meaning. Um, now, I went to have a quick look uh, in the Buddha Karate book, mm-hmm. but I don't, the, the 11 mottos of Masayama are in there. Mm-hmm. I don't think the Doja Kun is in there. Hmm. I didn't see that the Doja Kun was in there. Well, I haven't hit it yet. I'm still going through the book. I haven't mm-hmm. hit it yet. Uh, it'll be in my book. Yeah. <laughs> well, you talk to Cameron about it. But anyway, so let's go through it. So we'll train sure. our hearts and bodies for a firm, unshakable, unshaken spirit. I have my own thoughts on that. Go on. Think? No, go on. I think for me, it means that you train... When, it, when he says trains our hearts and bodies, I think it's mind, body, and and, and heart, spirit, whatever. Well, and your heart, a, heart is your courage, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, so it goes back to that whole thing of perseverance and us and uh, overcoming. And and I think there's a lot to that. I mean, that's why I believe that Kyokushin should be hard training because anything else then will be easier. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. A firm, unshaken spirit. Yeah. So you, you you create this unbreakable spirit, unshaken, mm-hmm. unfaltering right. in the face of fear. Exactly. That's what we're looking to build. First line of the Doja Kuhn. Exactly. Very how, poignant. And how do you do that? I mean, it's one thing to train hard, push-ups, sit-ups, and do and body conditioning, all this stuff. But that's one thing that I uh, I do give props to <sighs> Sheehan Terry for. Uh <laughs> <laughs> me in, in regards to like um real life application as well mm. so having the that, pressure the test and stuff on shaking spirit in a dojo is another to have on shaking spirit when somebody is fucking posting you at 12 mm-hmm. o'clock at night and you're, yeah you're and like, we and we we use stories of this uh from uh, jacques scandalous say the story about uh so when they were attacked by a gang there was a gang of people or whatever and source i was there and he fucking loved it mm-hmm. his eyes were burning in flame and he was he wasn't faulted at all by it right. he re- in fact he reveled in it and i think that that's that unshaken spirit not not that i can get up and i can fight in the tournament and i and, I, and i've got past my nerves it's just sp- everything whatever life throws at you in any moment you can deal with it yeah and we will pursue with- I think everyone deals with it. Still it is always a struggle. It is always a struggle. Sorry, and it, no, one's, no, no one's saying you can't struggle. No one's saying you can't That's be right. upset. It's not an A or B. It's not you have it or you don't have it. It's, no. It's, it, it, it's a gray assume. area. Yeah. It's a work in progress. Yeah. We will pursue the true meaning of the martial way so that in time our senses may be alert. Okay, so for me, that one means that people should be reading my blog, The Martial Way, and oh, yeah. and, and doing everything that... It... So say says it there. It's so say Pursue say the it. true meaning of The Martial Way. Right? So say he set me up for my own brand. It's amazing. That's what he's talking about. That's what he's yeah. talking about. Yeah, obviously. Obviously. So your senses may be alert. So what, what we said, what was the true martial way was just not being a dick, training hard, you know, training realistic that's the true martial way um well, it's really important that line that's after though we'll we will pursue the meaning of the martial way so that in time our senses time. Will be alert. not when you get your belt right. not when you get your grading stamp right in time they will they and will become alert and everyone's different and you'll only become alert and again going back to confidence. A, a confidence and pressure testing yes the Hombu Dojo in the early days was a, a a very, very hard place to be. It was a lion's den. The fighting was all out brawling fighting. Yeah. People were hard men. Yeah. That's, why they, that's why they were like they were. Yeah. Uh, with true vigor, we will seek to cultivate a spirit of self-denial. That's an interesting one. It's deeply philosophical. It is with true vigor. So, you know, have vigor in everything you do. Have a bit of the Jewish call it chutzpah. Have yes, a bit of chutzpah. That's true. Yes, exactly. It is. See, I'm a well traveled man. Chutzpah. Uh, for a spirit of self denial. So don't be 
easily swayed. Don't be gluttonous. Don't be greedy. Deny yourself certain things to be stronger. I, I take from that. Stoicism. Yeah, stoicism, yeah. as we've yeah. said. Vigorous in life yeah. and cultivate this spirit of, I will deny myself now to be stronger in the future. Yeah. Marcus. This Aurelia. is. Sorry. Uh-huh. Marcus. Uh, Marcus um, what's it called? Mem- not memoirs. Mem- uh, yeah. Um, yeah, memoirs. Isn't it memoirs? Is it called memoirs? No, no, it's called um, something else. Mm-hmm. Letters of something or. Oh, right. Uh, Marcus. Oh, shit. I highly recommend his, it, though. Yeah, his his uh, works that he wrote is called something, uh, something letters. Oh, is it letters? Do I need to search for this myself? Because I've got my own searching facilities here. I've had to because Scott is so slow. Oh, oh God. Mm. Well, that's not important. That's not that's not important anyway. Okay. So this this one. Is one that I kind of meditations. Meditation. I knew it was something. Meditations of uh, Marcus Aurelius. Yes. We will respect our superiors and refrain from violence. I struggle with this one because Terry's my friend. <laughs> You're supposed to be my superior. <laughs> it, it is I, I, not not the respect of superiors. So when I was a younger coming up, yeah, you're anyone with a higher grade. Yes. They, they have a certain amount of respect. We, we know that they, we have a yeah. certain amount of respect. But if they're a higher grade, as we've just said, that does nothing. They've only got their grade because they've time served. They've been in the right place at the right time. They will only be afforded the minute amount of respect that that grade, you know, has. But they won't be respected as a karateka, as a person, as a whatever. I agree with this one big time because there are people who have stripes on their belts and I'm, I know I'm supposed to be respectful and stuff, but it's, it's difficult because whatever it, that's a, that's a tricky one, you know, cause you look yeah. at somebody who like, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to compare. Like I look at somebody like, again, I always bring up on the show, but it's easy for me cause it's my first go-to, but Sensei Steve, it's his whole fucking life is karate. Everything in his life is karate. If that guy, he talks about when he was working labor and he would use it to work on his stances and stuff like that. Like, I got to respect that. So I got to yeah. respect my. Yeah. Uh, and, and Sensei Steve has not had an easy life. Uh, correct. He's had a tough life. Correct. Tough life. Coming out, coming out of communism uh, in Hungary, Romania, the Eastern Bloc country. Correct. Tough life. Correct. And coming over here, starting from scratch, starting all over again. You know, so it's, it's. Yeah, so I know I understand you have to. So him, yes, of, of course I'm going to respect my superior. But then when I see and, and you and I have been in conversations with other people like who have got belts thrown at them and all this yeah. kind of stuff, it's like it's hard to. It's, you know. I suppose there's two ways of looking at that, though, right? So you know the color of your belt denotes a certain rank, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't denote whether you're my superior or not. So you well, could have. I think uh, they would you, argue with that, but yeah. They, they, in the terms of hierarchical structure, yes. Mm-hmm. But in the terms of uh, a first Q world champion, mm-hmm. a showdown that's, that's never fought in a tournament is not his superior. Right. In a certain sense. Right. Okay. Right, so that we could normal. look at. We could look at that as in your superiors, as in someone that is superior to you in knowledge and ability. Right, right. Not just not just what color they wear. Right. So I that's the what we'd say. I would say superior in knowledge and ability. Right. You you respect those people, and we do. Agreed. Shian Cameron, Shian Gary, all the old. We exactly, respect them. Exactly. Exactly. So I think that's what that means. Mm-hmm. But other people now would say no, no. I'm a sixth fan. You must respect me. <laughs> exactly. And refrain from violence. See, no, I would look at that as not to never get involved in violence. I agree. To with refrain that. from violence as being don't be a bully. For the because if your job, right. yeah, if your job is to deal with violence, a police officer, a doorman, security bodyguard, then you are involved. It's different. It's different. But as an average bloke going down the street, 
whatever. Don't dish it out for the sake of dishing it out. Exactly. It should be a last resort. Yeah. 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 Right. Folks, we will, you notice how much better my audio is than Terry's? Anyway. I don't I don't uh, think people do. They, they barely hear you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Next one. This is, what, this is what you sound like. This is what you sound like. Oh, listen, people. Welcome to the podcast. This is uh, Spencer Scott. Please I'm comment below. A, Please talking to a sock. Please comment below. And I just happen to have a sock ready, prop. Which is really <laughs> odd. I don't, I don't <laughs> want to know where the sock's been. That's, <laughs> that's the washing that's really basket weird. next to me. That's really weird. Just... Anyway, uh, people, let, let us know below who needs a better uh, setup for audio. Anyway, go on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll follow. So the issue used to be we'll follow our God. But the, it, it was changed to be a bit more. I, I think the trans- this one's a tricky one. I think the translation of it originally has has been retranslated as better. So we will follow our religious principles and never forget the true virtue of humility. Now, me, I am very humble. I'm probably the most humble guy I know. My humility is only trumped by my greatness. (laughs) Of all the people I know, Terry, you're one of them. (laughs) A very humble guy. Very, very humble. Actually, you are. You are. I'm not gonna lie. You, you know you are. <laughs> I like to joke you about like it. I like to take the piss out of things, but you're pretty. I like to, I like to take the piss out of myself. Yeah, me too. You've you got to. You've got yourself, to. You, man. Jesus. You've got to take yourself too seriously. You've got to joke about yourself. Life is too serious to take seriously. Uh, so we we've we've talked about religion before, right? Now, I would take this as religious principles, not your principles of religion but your principles that you religiously follow. Right. Be a good person, humble, all those things that I would hope that your religion... Always go for the kill shot. <laughs> These sort of things. <laughs> it does not say in there, anywhere in that quote, that you must take your religion into the dojo. It does no. not say that. No. No. Follow our religious principles. Right. Right. And never try to virtue of humility because being humble is very virtuous. Uh, as uh, did we, did we mention on the show last week about Chian Cameron, who is now, no, I don't think we did. I think I forgot to mention it. I put a post out about it. I oh, forgot right. to mention I don't it. Think you mentioned it. That's right. So go ahead. So Chian Cameron yes. was graded to seventh Dan. <laughs> So Shian Cameron is now a seventh Dan, okay? Never there was a damn thing about There it. was no fanfare about this. There was nothing. No one knew about it. Yeah. There's a little there's a little bit in his book at the bottom about the author saying that Shian Cameron was awarded his seventh Dan by Oishi Shian last year. Of course. Um he didn't even tell me. Crazy, eh? It just didn't bring it up. Just doesn't bring it up at all. Um crazy. And someone else said to me, he was like, Do you, you know that Cameron had a seventh down? I was like, what? I know. I never knew either no? until, you, until you mentioned it. I never friggin' knew. And I found it so ironic with the multitude of posts coming out with people with these 10th dans and oh, uh, everyone's and, been and awarded it's grades. It's crazy. And then you have a guy as legit as they come as Cameron and not a peep. Well, I said to me, speaks volumes. I I view that as now, now only now his grades are catching up with his knowledge, (laughs) right? Because his knowledge far surpasses grades that he was. So yeah, that that personifies then that virtue of humility. Yeah. Yep. Next one, we will look upwards. I like this one. We will look upwards to wisdom and strength, not seeking other desires. Tricky. And money, obviously money. We all need money. Yeah. Um, wisdom and strength. Be strong, train in. But this is not, you know, it is probably could not just be physical strength, mental strength, mm-hmm. fortitude, strength of character. Strength covers a multitude of things. Absolutely. Um, wisdom. Obviously, we all look for wisdom. And the, and and the difference between knowledge and wisdom is the difference between wisdom and knowledge. No, the, what the difference between knowledge mm-hmm. 
and wisdom. The bit there's in the a, middle. Yeah, no, there's a saying about this. I'm trying it's to my fucking that. saying. I'm telling you it. <laughs> it's not your saying. There it's my no fucking way. saying. I put it on a post. That's my fucking saying. <laughs> Terry Burkett. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I'm, I'm queuing you in to drop the golden nugget. I can't remember you're... now. You got me so <laughs> off. You're fumbling. I am fumbling. Right, so every it's easy to go and get knowledge. Read a book, you've got some knowledge. Okay, now put in that knowledge into practice with experience creates wisdom. I just, so the, I, just, the, the, I just thought old age created wisdom. But... Experience. <laughs> experience. Experience. You could be old age, sat and you say, not do a fucking thing. There's no wisdom there. I'd be very experienced and wisdom in it. I could tell you all about wis- that arm. You'll be whismical, is what you will be. <laughs> True. That's pretty whismical. Much I am. <laughs> so that difference there is that is that the difference between knowledge and my pad keeps. Uh, well, uh, I understand. No, it's an important one though. It's experience. You can sit there and read books all day and read about Marcus Aurelio or whatever the hell you want to read about all day, every day. But it's not going to do anything to you unless it actually yeah. makes a difference. And in that, life that's and knowledge. That's knowledge. And I I know, wisdom. and there's there's a saying that was that was done by um, Calvin Coolidge, the some American president. He was saying I can't remember the saying on it, but it was he was a I think it's Calvin Coolidge. He was a president, wasn't he? Been, let but shall I look it up as well? I will go on. Tell your story. Basically, it, basically his saying, and he was talking about you know the world is full of geniuses the world is full of geniuses that are that don't do a thing that have never done anything wow never heard of this person kelvin coolidge 30th u.s president read read the quote that is uh, uh, attributed to him can you restart the quote for me because there's a lot of stuff here for him so i know um it's basically about the world is full of genii or geniuses or unspent geniuses or something like that okay Yeah. Got it? Uh, yeah. It's basically that the, the, the essence of it is press on, keep going, keep doing it. That solved all of human race's problems. Nothing in this world can take place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not unrewarded. Genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of un. Oh, I see what he's doing here. Okay, hold on. Let me reread this. Nothing in this world could take place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated uh, derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, has solved and always will solve the problem of the human race. Perseverance, right? Yeah, exactly. I forget what point I was trying to make now on that. You know, obviously, you're not as. But that's a, uh, that's a good saying. What was the point? What was it on about? Future familiar with looking wisdom, sin, not seeking our desires. I don't. Oh yeah, yeah. We were with we were, we were on about knowledge. You can have yeah, knowledge, knowledge, but it's not wisdom. Wisdom right. is having done something, and you've got the wisdom to pass it on. Then, because you've done it, right? Knowledge without application is useless. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, what it reminds, you know what it reminds me of? Actually, I just brought this up to somebody the other day. I watched a um, an old, I think it was like 2020 or one of those um, shows that used to come on the news years ago. This is, I'm talking years ago, but I remember watching this. There was this guy who had the, it's funny because we were joking about Mensa at the beginning of this. He had the highest recorded IQ, right? So he's fucking genius. So they went to visit him, interview him. He lived in a trailer with his mom <laughs> lived in a trailer he was on social assistance lived in a trailer could not deal with society and tinkered around with stuff and he was whatever nothing so he had tons of knowledge tons of knowledge that could be applicable and useful in many many different avenues but never did see the light of day so knowledge versus wisdom. tesla invented a light bulb 
who had all the credit for it. Yes, exactly, exactly. Because he brought it to market. Exactly, exactly. And it is. It, it's who brings it to market, who actually does it. The world exactly. is full of people sitting there going, AC versus oh, AC. Yeah. I fucking invented the window wiper. That was my idea. That was my idea. I invented yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, the next one then. Or oh, the, the final one. All our lives, through the discipline of karate, we will seek to fulfill the true meaning of the Kyokushin way. What do you want? Yes. <laughs> All our lives. So that, that, the, first, the, the first three words are very important. It doesn't say, for 10 years, I will do this. For 20 years, I'll do it. All it says lives. all our lives. So if you've done karate and then you stop doing karate for 10 years and go, I'm still karate. You're not. You stopped. Mm -hmm. You're not still doing it. But there, you there's people back. you can, come you back can always come back into it. There's people who are training into their 60s, 70s, 80s. Now, we're not saying you, you're Marco not doing Lala. hundreds Look of push-ups. Marco Lala, who I had on my show. Was he's a, young. He's his 50, 53. He's in his 50s, but he's a legend. But he's a guy who stopped. Mick Gook, who's 65. stopped for a long time. He came back, and now he's doing crazy stuff. It's awesome. I love yeah. it. Yeah. You, you can always come back. And, and I know people who, you know, have retired from karate. Mm -hmm. but, and then it's like, once you're karate, retired. you're always karate. Yeah. But it's like, how, how, do you, how do you retire from How do you retire from walking? Yeah. Exactly. That's it, it's like, you know, you haven't got to be a champion. You haven't got to be smashing things, but you can still be training. You, you know, you, if you've done it for 30 years, it's in your body. It's there. It's inside you. That's why it's so wonderful to see older folks who still have that passion for it. And, uh, you know, Hunt Jaron Neal is a great example of that. Like I would yeah. say, like he's very, very senior. But man. Still got a fire in his eye. Does he ever? Like I had spent a couple of years now since I see him at a camp or something, but the Oh, yeah, the presence. You can feel the presence. Yeah, the yeah. Fire. It's incredible, incredible. So it's a, a lifetime, a lifetime yeah. in karate. Yeah. Now, if anybody should retire, you should retire. Not put on another gi. Mm -hmm. he's, he's done his time. He's put a lot into it. He's served his time. Man mm -hmm. should never have to wear the gi again. Right. But he doesn't because that's not what it's about. Exactly. It is about all our lives. Mm -hmm. So you do karate till the day you die. If it means that much to you, we so, will all our lives through the discipline of karate. But the next line, though, we will seek to fulfill the true meaning of the Kyokushin way. So what is the true meaning of the Kyokushin way? I mean, I think it's been distorted so much over the years and it'll mean different things. To people. Same with everything. It, anything can be twisted to suit anything. Mm -hmm. But I think we've said the, Kyok, the Kyokushin way is that ultimate truth, being truthful, being honest, not standing there with your fucking 10th down or whatever grade you've given yourself talking about, I was at the third world tournament. I actually got saucy a glass of water because he said I'm thirsty. I give him the drink. I, that makes me a branch chief virtually. He said to me, <laughs> he said to me, oh, thank you very much. Good man. So I called me a good man. Which means this is the chief that does. Okay. Obviously, yeah. if translation was a little bit, you know, rough, yeah. but basically yeah. he said, you're a branch chief. So I went back to India and I built the largest Kyokushin organization in India. <laughs> That's what happens. Okay, folks, okay? he's just making shit up as he goes along. We're not, <laughs> I just, we're not, I'm not, I'm just making this up, but, <laughs> but that is how it goes. People, yeah. people bring up pictures. Look, use me with Sosai. You, you stood in the background. <laughs> He's not talking to you. You're stood in the background. There's three people in front of you. This is your claim to fame. You was there. <laughs> it's like, these are the people I'm talking about in my original post. Yeah. So all our lives with discipline of Kyokushin Karate. Just be, 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 be real. But what is the meaning of Kyokushin Karate? This is the one line that's always messed with me. Because he, should, he didn't go on to define what the true meaning of Kyokushin and is. philosophy changes as time goes on as well. Yeah. yeah. So if, if you sat, the source, I was still around. Um, we all, we change our, we, I think differently to what I thought 20 years ago, 100%. I've got different views. Years, my views change. Were, were different my views fucking change every week. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I'm, I'm, and they will, as you develop like now me and you, 
10 years ago, if you'd spoken to us, yeah. we would be stoic uh, Advent um, champions of kata. <laughs> Kata's the only way. If you don't do kata, you're not doing karate. Right. Now we're both kind of reassessing a little bit and being like, yeah, kata's got its place, but, but, but. We are reassessing. So things do, things change. And, and to take it away from karate, I mean, uh, like I have a lot of study in philosophy and neuroscience and stuff. And I'm telling you folks that every 10 years, and this is, this is, this is fact, you are a different person every 10 years. And you can yeah. easily look back on your own life. And I don't know how old anyone out there who's watching or listening this is, but just think for yourself. Are you the same person? Are you, are you thinking the same way that you did 10 years prior? Probably not. And if you are, well, kudos to you, then you're on a good straight line, but most people mm -hmm. don't. Because quite frankly, I would go back to myself in my 20s and slap myself in the head. I didn't know shit, and I thought I did. So yeah, it, it's a fully evolving, changing process. We do, and that, and that is life. That is and life. I think that, that that's the Kyokushin way. Be true to yourself, mm. be vigorous in everything you do. Mm -hmm. Of true vigor, and I and one of my favorite sayings, and I always say it: um, I may be wrong, but I'm never in doubt. Oh, that's good. I let you know. Do you know what that is? With mm. us off, mm. Dan Pena. Oh wow, really? You know, you've heard of Dan Pena? Of course, I know who Dan Pena yeah, is. Yeah. Well, I love so. Dan Pena stuff, guys. If you if you're if you're interested in business and development, and and you know, uh, the what can be measured can be achieved. So the, so the mark of measurement for business is turnover, wealth, the amount that you've created in it, okay? Mm -hmm. Dan Penny is all about this. They call him the $50 billion man because he, he's created $50 billion worth of enterprise and business and work from his men, people who he's mentored. And one of his things, his favorite sayings is, uh, I may be wrong, but I'm never in doubt. And I love that. I live by that. I will argue black is blue. It is blue. But I may, it may be white, but I will argue it's fucking blue. I won't be doubtful of it. Mm -hmm. And then if you tell me, if I'm proved wrong, I just change. Yeah, I was wrong. It's this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, a, that's a, a good saying. Do we, what's the time? We check the time. We've got 20 minutes because Scott's, we've got to be off at 1 a.m. Yeah, I have a hard cut. So we are five, 105. Should we quickly look through the 11 mottos of Masoyama as well? Sure. Let's do it. Okay. Hold on a second. So Let's we've go. got the 11 mottos here as well. These can be a bit more. Uh, we can look into these a little bit more as well. Uh, luckily, I wrote a whole art article on it. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Yes, I did. Let me share. We'll have to post that in the comments. Post that in the comments. So this is the article I wrote on the 11 mottos of uh, Masuyama. Pin the, uh, we'll pin the link to this article in the yeah. comments. Uh, so this is just a bit of history. I want to scroll down to I find, and this is where Oyama traveled to, uh, um, to the mountains to train. Yeah. After 18 months, he was confident in his ability. Oyama fully understood the nature of the path of martial arts. This is a great quote, by the way, from Masuyama. I love this quote. I put this in there. Karate is the most zen-like of all martial arts. It has abandoned the sword. This means that it transcends the idea of winning and losing to become a way of thinking and living for the sake of people in accordance with the way of heaven. Its meaning, therefore, reached the profoundest levels of human thought. For a long time, I have emphasized that karate is Budo, and if Budo is removed from karate, it's nothing more than sport. Show karate, or even fashion karate, the eye of training merely to be fashionable. Karate that has discarded Budo has no substance. It is nothing more than a barbaric method of fighting or a promotional tool for the purpose of profit. No matter how popular it becomes, it is meaningless. That's some deep shit. That's some deep shit. That's some deep, deep shit. Deep shit. Uh, and I now, uh, at 30 years on as a 40-year-old man, um, I see these things. My views have changed as well on it. I spent a long time becoming the most efficient outside fighter that I could be. I spent a long time doing that. Mm -hmm. 
to realize and to, to get to the other side of, well, I don't need to now. I don't need to fight you. I know what's going to happen. So I just choose not to because I don't want to spend the night in a cell. <laughs> so I, tran- I, I transcend that violence. I don't, I, don't, I don't need to do it anymore. I don't need to prove it to myself anymore. So these 11 mottos were highly influenced by, again, the same as you said off the top with Musashi. Uh, because yeah. Musashi had done something similar, and uh, Oyama was a, a huge, huge uh, fan and proponent of Musashi. So he created these 11 mottos to live by. Uh, I'm not going to butcher because I know Todd's watching, and I don't want to make fun of myself here. But do you want to try pronouncing it? Zainomei Juchikejo. Us. 11 mottos. I think I don't, people can't read it on the screen, I don't think. Because oh, most really? of people look, yeah, they listen to this, don't they, in a podcast, oh, and true. they listen to it. Oh, so true. I'll read them out. Yep. So I'll begin with Compute. the first one, and we'll go on. Okay. The martial way, Budo, begins and ends with courtesy. Therefore, be properly and generally courteous at all times. I think this is not just related to the martial way. I think this is life in general. Life, man. Life. Absolutely. Courtesy costs nothing. Courtesy costs nothing. Be a good person. And it goes a long, long way. And it pays dividends and it will come back to you. It does. It does. Just being polite. Just, just you know, if I look at it courtesy as well as, uh, you know, be genuinely courteous at all times. You know, letting someone go first, holding the door open. You know, if I I won't drive past someone broke down, if I see someone, you're you all right? You okay? You've got someone coming. Do you need any help? You know, you're being courteous. And I think these. We live in tricky times, though. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, true. I held the door for someone and I got uh, snapped at. It was kind of funny. Anyway, whatever. I will still hold the door. I don't care. It is. Following the martial way is like scaling a cliff. Continue upwards without rest. It demands absolute and unfaltering devotion to the task at hand. Take this screen off. People can't see it anyway. People want to see our beautiful faces. <laughs> yes. Um, that one, see, I, I, see, following the martial way is like scaling a cliff. But when you get to the top of the cliff, that's the end of it. But I think that's the point, though. It's continuously upwards. There is no, there is no, the, there is, no, there's always another edge to get. But not if you're at the top. But does it say the top, though? Following it says it. No, it just says it it's, it's it like says scaling, it's a cliff. scaling a cliff. Continue, continue, continue upwards, upwards without, without rest. rest. It demands absolute non-faltering devotion to the task at hand. It doesn't talk about the end result. It does not talk mm. about the top of the cliff. It does not talk about the top of the mountain. It just talks about the journey. No, I just being pedantic on it. You know, if you if you mm. if you scale a cliff, when you get to the top, that's the end of it. Then you go back down. You climb Everest, the highest peak in the world. You get to the top of Everest, it's done. Then you go back down. <laughs> so depressing. Three, strive to see, sorry, strive to seize the initiative in all things and all time guarding against actions stemming from selfish animosity and thoughtfulness. thoughtlessness. Strive to seize the initiative in all things. Go for it. Like we said, All go for it. All the time guarding against actions stemming from selfish animosity or thoughtlessness. Mm. So again, go for it. I'm reading this as go for it, but also be aware. Don't go for it if it's going to cause harm to someone else just for the sake because you can go for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's, that's what I get from don't, that. Don't, don't make stupid decisions. Yeah. Yeah. And we all make stupid decisions. All right. Go. Number four. Even for the martial artist, the place of money cannot be ignored. Yet one should be careful never to become attached to it. Ooh. So Source I does address a very important fact of life is money. Without money, you ain't doing anything. Yeah, you can live as a hermit on the side of the mountain and grow carrots and eat fish. That's, if that's your life you want to do, okay. But if you live in a city, you need money. 
You need money to go to school, to go to work, to eat, to, to do anything. That is, and it always has been, part of society, whether it's not paper money, coins, shells, furs, pelts, sparkly things. There's always been a trade. Mm -hmm. So, so I think you'll be very uh, ignorant to ignore that fact, but don't let it consume you. Exactly. Next one, number five. Budo, the martial way is centered in posture. Strive to maintain correct, correct posture at all times. I think this one is great because it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people or many people could read this just as physical posture, but that's not just what anyone in, in life as well. It's mental posture. Yeah. Is that what you get from that mental posture? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Right. It's like, uh, no I, do, I don't take it. I don't, I take it as physical punch posture. See, I don't as in don't slouch because you can be, you can be very physically deflated by slouching your shoulders, arching your back, your head low, shuffling along on the wall on, as you're walking, correct posture, spine aligned, head crowning, arms back, chest out, walk with purpose. You have good posture, your chakra, I take it because of your chakras. So if you slouch, your chakras are all messed up. Your chakras going down your spine, correct alignment allows your chakras to be more effective. Well, I agree with you, and I think that's really important. Unless you have mental alignment and mental posture, I don't think it's going to be worth anything. You can fake But is there a thing as mental posture? Of course there is, because you can teach somebody to fake their posture to be whatever, mm -hmm. but unless they, f they believe it in their head, right? You, that's why I think you know some people are in a room, and you feel their presence, not because of how they're physically standing, as you feel their posture mm. you feel their confidence you feel their aura their aura that's how I yeah it. oh okay that's an interesting view on it i hadn't i hadn't looked at it from that perspective mm -hmm. the martial way begins with 1000 days and is mastered after 10,000 days of training so what's that roughly that's roughly three years and it's based in science based in science yeah that mm -hmm. repetitive bang yeah. so you, you you after three years of training you start to uh, understand the movements your body will start to get into it you know you don't train for one year and then think you can do karate mm -hmm. or and then spend the, fucking 10 to 12 hours a day every day doing your karate maybe you can definitely surpass others it's, it's different because like, the, the, because his young lions the, the white yeah. they were three years it's three like, years to stand down it's like well, i know every quote in the world has been attributed to bruce lee but there was a bruce lee quote where he said, I, I fear the, I don't fear the man that's practiced. What is it? I don't fear the man. That's he practiced. didn't fucking don't fear the man that knows a thousand techniques. Fear the man that does one technique a thousand times. Right. Right. So, but it's Terry like, Burkett. Oh, Terry Burkett. But whatever, <laughs> whoever said it, whatever, it's the truth. Though. It's the same thing. It's that repetitive. Yeah. Um, getting it green. So all this stuff, that's neuroscience. That's just ingraining those pathways into the brain. So yeah. It becomes secondary nature. Yeah, it goes back to that thing. Even you saw the clip of me earlier. You're like, "Oh, you you uh, favor your right leg." Well, of course, I'm right legged and right hand, and that's where my brain goes. And it just shows that I have not done enough repetitive practice on the left side. Simple as that. Hmm. You should be ashamed of yourself. I am. <laughs> Go on number seven. In the martial arts introspection begets wisdom always see contemplation on your actions as an opportunity to improve 100 percent. yes we don't do this enough 100%. I, I i listen to everything i say i go look back over things like with that comment earlier i've looked and I thought that was a that was a fucking throwaway comment and it's put mm -hmm. out the wrong impression so mm -hmm. I've gone back and I've edited it and I've said, this is why I've edited it. Mm -hmm. Cause I think it, it, I, I wrote it quite quickly and it's come out the wrong way. So very important to, to, to look back and, and, you know, introspection to see, look in, and it's not just like, oh, well, like, look into yourself. What did I mean when I said that? Absolutely. And I think that's the way it should be. No matter like if you're not doing that, my personal opinion tells me your ego is getting in the way. Mm. 
you should be able to look back at your decisions or anything in your life or your week or day or whatever the case may be and go home. Hmm, I could have done this better. I could have done that better. Or, or I did a great job and wow, looks like I'm really on the path, whatever. But doing that retrospection and, and, and uh, yeah. reflection, I think is super, super important. You've got to, I, I've always said, um, you know, to like argue with my ego because we all have an yeah, ego of course, uh, and yeah. it all comes out. And, uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you once what, I, what happened to me once as I was, so we had a bus driver in this little village where I grew up and he drove, I grew up with him punching the sheep in the face, the same village, same village, yeah, okay. same village. Everyone, I, I did a lot of stuff in this village. We had a, but it's one road in one road out village. Okay. So we had the right. bus driver, same bus driver I've had from a young kid going to nursery up to my school days, up to leaving school. So right. I've left school and I'm like, you know, 1920 i'm the big man doing karate and one day i cut the bus up in my car i cut the bus up my fault and uh, the, the bus driver that i knew really well he was like yo you want to watch a driving blah, blah 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 and i'm like ego kicks in it's your fucking fault not my fault you've done this you've done that how am i supposed to know what you're fucking doing you're in the big bus but me being a dick and and he was like well i was going to try and help you with work and then i said i don't need your fucking help to work i'm doing very fucking well on my own thank you very much all right job done he drives off i go home and then then it starts stewing with me and i'm like that's not right that's not good i i was a prick mm-hmm. and, and i'm stewing over this and i'm and i'm looking at it and it's like why this i've known this guy for deck since i was a little kid mm-hmm. and he always been straight with each other mm-hmm. and it ate at me and i was like i need to i need to restore the i need to right the world and restore the balance so mm-hmm. i jumped in my van and i went to where he was so i went to where he was, got out i spoke to another guy and i said oh can i speak to so-and-so please and they were like, oh, he's coming out to fucking kick off now. And, he, and I'm like, I want to speak to so-and-so, please. He came out. He said, what's wrong now? And so the other guys and I said, listen, I owe you an apology. I'm in the wrong. I apologize. I should never, I get quite emotional. I'm actually thinking about this. this I said, awesome. I said, I should never, have, I can't believe I'm actually getting emotional. That's fucking awesome. Wow. I said, I can't, I, I should never have spoken to you like that. I've known you since I was a little kid. Should never have spoken to you like that. I apologize. Um, I can't believe how emotional that's made me. Um, and it righted things. It made things, because I'm not a bad person. Exactly. I say a lot of shit, but I'm not a bad person. And if I've upset someone, if I've hurt someone genuinely, I'll always try and write it. I always try and apologize and make it better. Wow. I can't check that's a uh, path I wasn't expecting, man. That'll be so, yeah, twenty dollars for our therapy. <laughs> so they said, "I know." Ooh, it's a lot of demons come out there, then. But that's that's it's awesome, though. I mean, it it right there that should speak volumes about you. I'm I'm the same way, man. Stuff like that will like eat away just, at you, doesn't it? Haunts me. Like even to this day, there's things like I'll look back on Jesus. Why not? Like thirty years ago, why didn't I? So kudos to you that you went back and fixed that and right. I think that's what happens to us. We we don't fix things. What was his response to that? He was he accepted the apology. He was he was already an old man then. He was like right. he was about sixty then. Yeah. So hey, he he was that's only fucking nine years. He, <laughs> he was ancient. <laughs> so he he shook my hand and and you know we I I still see him now. We've we've been friends ever since. That's you beautiful, know. beautiful thing, Terry. Um, Beautiful. <laughs> can't believe how emotional I got. I've never beautiful. been emotional talking that's about that. That's beautiful. But uh, it means it means yeah, something to you. I think we don't we don't do it enough. And what we do is we let it slide, mm-hmm. and we're like, oh well, whatever. And you keep letting it slide. And I think that causes all sorts of emotional baggage. Hundred percent that you carry with you all your life. Talks and then you know we're, we're all fucked up. We're all emotionally fucked up. Yes, I want people to know that. The people who think they're alone in that kind of stuff, you're not. We're all fucked. No. We all have our baggage. I should own stock in Samsonite. We all have our own fucking baggage. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right. Oh, right. The next, the next one. Number know. eight. Is it me or you? 
I think is me, is it? The nature and purpose of the martial way is universal. All selfish desires should be roasted in the tempering fires of hard training. I love that. That's a good it. one. I love it. That's a good one. And it's something that I have used before. I use it now. Like when I'm feeling like this week hasn't been that great. And what I've been doing is burning it out in a, in, um, in a gym and stuff. It, it's true. Yeah. yeah. I didn't, I, we said this before. You just train hard. Yeah. Train hard. Roasting fires. You're sweating. It works everything out. Yeah. It makes things then insignificant. Universal. The martial arts on, you... begin with a point and end in a circle. Straight lines stem from this principle. This one's tricky. So this is source size circle and point theory. Yeah. Uh, where, uh, you know, all movement is circular based. It starts mm -hmm. from a point, ends in a circle. Mm -hmm. It's a big fan of circular movement. Mm -hmm. Straight lines stem from will that. stem from, from that principle, from the same thing. Start with a point, circle block, come down, straight line, bang, into the punch. Yeah. Okay, now I can't, I mean, that, that's, that's in a nutshell what it is, but I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure in Cameron's book, it goes into more detail, and Sorcise books, look at Sorcise, if you, if you are serious about your Kyokushin study, you, ha you must have Sorcise three original books, and you must be reading them and looking at them, because he's got his circle and point theory in those books. And Next also, one. And also applicable to life, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the true essence of the martial way can only be realized through experience. Wisdom. Knowing this, learn never to fear its demands. That, 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 that's what we were talking about all the time. Yeah, exactly. You know, actually doing it. You can't, you can't be a judge in a tournament. <laughs> for 10 years never fought and then say you have got experience of tournaments you have to fight in the tournament mm -hmm. to have the experience to be able to never fear the demands that it takes they don't be afraid of it mm -hmm. do it and go for it go on and the last one last one always remember in the martial arts the rewards of confident and grateful a confident a confident <laughs> sorry interrupted always remember in the martial arts the rewards of a confident and grateful heart are truly abundant abundant so this this reminds me of i carry a coin around with me uh, a brass coin about that big i carry in my pocket on the coin it's got the latin saying bravery uh reward favors the brave mm -hmm. yeah i live by that saying agreed and i, I think totally this this the, so a confident and grateful heart truly abundant yes. if you're confident in what you want in life mm -hmm. i know i want it you go and you've got the bollocks mm -hmm. to go out and do it mm -hmm. then then rewards will truly be abundant same as in karate put the time in Put the training in, put the effort in, enter tournaments, go for gradings, don't fear the demands of training, and your rewards will be abundant. But again, all this stuff is transferable to life as well, not just martial arts, not just the martial economy. way. What is it? It's life. It's exactly. That's why I, I originally called my blog the martial way, because it, it summoned up everything for me. It's the martial way. It, it's like on them to Tommy on the mats in the gym or in life at the office with your siblings with your friends with everything that's the way it is and it's, a, and it's not an easy path either and I'm no. always you know being I guess that comes back to that reflection thing I'm always kind of hard on myself later going oh fuck why'd I do that or I acted out of emotion there or whatever the case may be mm. so you're con continuously trying to work towards it it's, it's, it's a work in it. progress though isn't yeah. it we're never the finished product exactly exactly I always thought that you know someday I will I'll, I'll die and but I'll be on my deathbed and I'll be like Oh, okay. Now I get it. <laughs> yeah. The secret to life is... Uh, uh. Exactly. Exactly. It's mm. a crazy journey, right? And, I, I, you, you, 
I've always said I want to be when, you know, your life flashes before your eyes. I want mine to take fucking days. <laughs> the shit that this guy is done, yeah. the shit that he's done, the shit that he's done in 40 years. I'm like, I'm live, I'm going to be a hundred. I've got another like 60 years to go yeah. easily. Yeah. You think so? I got be yeah, it. Of course I am. <laughs> I'm going to live forever. <laughs> <laughs> but but what people say though right so talk about limiting talk about a limit in life how long oh i live to about 60 70 yeah that'd be that'd be a good one i'd our be happy with that man our grandparents are great grandparents and so on and so yeah. forth man well, I, I was speaking to a customer and a customer that they're 94 right 94 years old all right they're old and frail you can still have a conversation with them you can still talk they're a bit stuck in their ways but it's like the woman has been on the planet for 94 years. She deserves to be stuck in her way. She can do whatever the fuck she wants. I told her to fuck up and do as she's told. But <laughs> she, yeah, to be honest, <laughs> like, shut the fuck up. I don't care what you've done. But respectfully, <laughs> <laughs> now, it's the same as I, when you meet people who are 100. Oh, that blows me away. It mm. blows me away. 100, they're still a bit compass mentis, And, you know, you have a conversation with them. Yeah. It it amazes me. Yeah. Fuck me, we should be listening to these people. Amazing. You've been around for a hundred years. Amazing. The things you have seen. And Joe Biden can't make it through a sentence. Sorry. Oh shit! Did I say that? Oh, 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 <laughs> well, I think that's early, job, early on. He's doing a great early, job. Early, early onset, <laughs> early onset dementia. The car is irrefutable. You can't. You can't talk about that shit. But I'm going to tell you right now. It I is, witnessed though. what Joe wrote. What Joe, wrote, what Joe Biden is going through right now. I witnessed firsthand. Saw it. I know the signs. It's there. And anybody who ignores it, you're a fucking fool, and you're playing a disservice to that man. And what's the tragic? What's the tragedy in this? So that man has been. The man is a show pony. He's pushed out the front. Do this. Do this. Do this. Do that. Talk about this. Yeah, talk about that. Same. And and you can yeah. see he he is falling it is sad. getting worse and worse sad it is sad G- it is sad G7 actually showed it more than anything but it's really sad anyway what did i see the other day is he, isn't he gonna he was gonna have a oh yeah we're going to politics now but again yeah, with life what we were talking about he's gonna have a like a five-hour debate with putin yeah good luck with that no breaks five hours debate with vladimir putin yeah black belt what, what Giro, f- killer ape dan in kyokshin yeah <laughs> <laughs> big killer he's a man you know and right, i bet his best rivers yeah and and <laughs> it's like he goes fishing with a bear not a fishing rod a fucking bear throws the bear in the water he pulls him back out with a bit of string got a fish in his mouth there's a great man feel <laughs> what is that conversation going to be like for five hours anyway but anyway, we, I, we digress shit. on. Let's wrap it up. We've okay. done one hour, 29 go minutes, 22 seconds. I'm going to go get myself some steak in a restaurant for the first time in a very long time. You have a good night. And when you're sitting and eating your steak, yes, you look back on yourself and introspect yourself and everything that's gone on. Us. This has been a damn good show. Damn good show. It's been a really good show. I can't wait to listen to this tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. So, folks, as usual, subscribe. Comment. Do all the pressy bits, likes. Com- we love the comments. We love interacting. Mm. And we want to – we seem to have stagnated a little bit. We want to keep the momentum going. We want some, some more likes. Share it as well, folks. If you like what we've talked about, share it on your page. Invite people to like it. But the and the comments they are good and we've had some good ones and um, it's the same people. Uh, yeah, we got some, our same little core people. There was one. Oh man, I wish I had my glasses. There's, I'm gonna just go right into the screen here. Leah Cervalli Smith. It was a great one. I I actually responded to today because he left it. Another insightful episode, guys. Would like to hear you guys talk about the different offshoots of Kyokushin. Like Kudo, Where, Kushin, what was, Ashihara, things like that. What was that one on? That was on our uh, the last episode. So that's a great idea. I really, really like yeah. that idea. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Because there's some big names there. Joko Ninomina. Yep. Ashihara. We still have to do our Motobu episode, but that's going to do Motobu. I'm taking a little bit of time off work coming up soon, so I want to do a massive amount of research on Motobu. So. Get some research on him. Yeah. You were the researcher. <laughs> Send it to me, and then I'll talk all about it. 
All right. Do your thing.